Hey, what's going on? Uh, my name is Jocko Willing. I spent 20 years in the military and sp spent a couple deployments over in Iraq and have a decent amount of experience in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and in mixed martial arts as a whole. And just wanted to convey a message to you all about training Jiu Jitsu and how impactful it is for law enforcement. There's a couple other guys here that also have a ton of experience. I'll let them introduce themselves. Hey guys, I'm JP Dunnell. I uh, did about 12 years in the SEAL teams, worked for a job there, deployed to Iraq twice, Afghanistan once, helped revamp the combatives program within the SEAL teams, which we can dive a little bit deeper into. Uh, because we saw firsthand, our guys actually needed to be better in situations where they weren't actually able to use their, their weapons, just like you guys deal with every day. Um, that's all I got for now. Hey guys, Rafi Arabello here, I'm 5th degree black belt. Uh, I started law enforcement last year, uh, I've been one year and a half as a law enforcement. And I think Jiu Jitsu is great for law enforcement because it's going to give you the tools you need when you need to deal with some situation body to body, hand to hand situation. And you're going to go think about the last resource going to be your gun. So I have been trained Jiu Jitsu my whole life and Jiu Jitsu has been helping me every day on my work as a police officer. Hi, my name is Dean Lister, I'm a few time world champion of Jiu Jitsu, Abu Dhabi Combat Club. I fought in the UFC, I fought in Pride, been around the world doing this great sport, very fortunate. I've trained many police officers, many military from many countries, and I've seen the development of the personality. Uh, the type of person that does and stays with the sport allows you to control yourself, control others around you with minimal force. And of course, I think it's overall fitness um, gets you ready to engage situations that need to be dealt with appropriately. Hope you all can stay with it and at least start with it. Hey guys, I'm Andre Olida, the day after, I'm a sixth degree black belt, I've been doing Jiu for 34 years. Uh, I have a big law enforcement program in my school. I have a partnership with a couple departments. Now in our school we have 200 to over 250 police officers training Jiu Jitsu on a daily basis with us. And I love what they, how they explain it to me. They use Jiu Jitsu to the de-escalate the situation. So before the situation gets out of control, with Jiu Jitsu, they are able to de-escalate the situation, keep themselves safe so they can go back to their home, to their family. Not only that, they can also keep the civilians safe, they can go back to their home, to their families too. Yeah, so <clears throat> I'm sure for every price in the state police, I asked all these, these nice men here to, to talk to you guys about this. And I want to just ask a question to everybody here to feed off what you said because a big thing now, especially after everything's been going on in the world, is de escalation. Uh, and can you guys put any input in there as far as how the training that you have, especially you now here in law enforcement and everything else, that can help just just the confidence that you have with the training walking into your can, can for me automatically start to de escalate a scenario down to where it needs to be without having to, to get to that point of uh, unreasonableness or even that deadly force to count. Well, nervous, nervous people do stupid stuff. And it doesn't matter who you are, whether you're wearing the uniform or you're a civilian. And if you have training that gives you confidence, you're not gonna be nervous in those situations. So the more you are less likely to do something stupid dealing with some crazy person if you know you have the skill sets and the ability to actually control the situation. The same thing that we're teaching our guys in the SEAL team to prepare for combat. If we didn't have to engage somebody with a weapon, what do we do next? Well, if you don't know what to do, you're going to do some stupid stuff. And once our guys were trained up on actual hand-to-hand -hand combatives, jiu-jitsu, and Muay Thai boxing, they were able to control those situations a lot better and not have to transition to a weapon, which is what we wanted. It's the same thing that our law enforcement wants as well. So for me, it's a confidence thing. When you see somebody that's confident, they don't get, they don't get nervous, they don't do stupid things. Yeah, it's all, from my point of view, it's all about the mentality to get to the fight. If you know you're going to get in a situation where you're going to need to fight somebody and you're able to control yourself before you even control the other person, it's already a win situation. I think that my, my brother, Jocko, would have a thousand times more experience than I would have this, but let's say if someone was to talk in front of people without talking in front of any people, you know, I can think of theories of how to talk in front of people, but if I never talk in front of people, I don't think I'm going to be very good at doing that. Of course, Jock was talking for a hundreds of thousands of people, you know, but if someone's never gone in front of a small group of people, they're not going to be good at talking to people. So if you, as a police officer or law enforcement agency officer, 
was to be in a situation of phys physicality, it's never happened to you, or you've had theory, you've never actually done it, or let's say done it on a consistent basis, it's a much harder for you to deal with the opponent, or let's say the, the situation at hand. So I think it's a very positive thing to stay with and uh, hopefully to get with to start with. I believe uh, what I think the team said was perfect. Uh, I believe that uh, when you train Jiu Jitsu, Jiu Jitsu, it's, it's a combat, it's a combat sport the whole time. And you want to be exposed to the training, you know, what you're training better with that, what you're training more comfortable with that. So you're going to get used to situations on the mat that you might have, it might help you, you know, it's not mine, it will help you on the street to win the And I think that comfortability, uh, the everyday training, everyday training, it's, it's going to help you so much to don't allow again the, the situation that you were to get out of control. This is a horrible conversation to, be, to have to have right now. It really is. And, and for all of us, for the last few years, we all have watched incident upon incident occur in, in, in the public view. And with, with the advent of cell phones and body cams, people are seeing things, we're seeing things, and all of us have sat there and shared videos and watched videos and seen dozens of things that could be done to prevent horrible situations from unfolding. And we actually know, we actually know, and this is, look, you know, JP and I, we, we spent a lot of time in combat, and people think, oh, you're in combat, you're always shooting everyone. No, actually, you're entering buildings and there's a bunch of people in there that don't have weapons. You don't go in there and shoot everybody, you gotta go in there and get control of them. They don't speak the language, they're scared. They're, they're going to react in ways you don't expect. They're going to be aggressive. All those things happen to us all the time. And we know that how to handle those situations. And so we saw it. we see law enforcement officers, and actually both of us are reserve police officers, and we see it where officers are not trained the way they should be trained. And therefore, terrible mistakes happen. People get badly injured. People get killed. And it's horrible to see. And we actually know what the solution is. And step one of the solution is to start training this simple sport, which is available all over the country now. And, and I guarantee, I guarantee it will save lives. It will save lives of suspects, it will save lives of police officers, and it will save the lives of the families who are destroyed when either suspects get killed or police officers have their lives ruined because they made a split second decision because, you know, JP used the word nervous. It's being nervous and being afraid. They don't know what to do. They've never been in that situation before and they don't know how to handle it. Someone puts hands on me. Someone puts hands on JP. Someone puts hands on any one of these guys. We do it for two or three hours a day. It's part of our life. It means nothing. You grab me and that's just the beginning of, of our interactions to human beings. One that I'm going to be in control of. That's the way life is supposed to be, and certainly for police officers, that's the way it needs to be. And you know what? If you're in leadership in the police department and you're listening to this right now, yeah, I'm definitely talking to you. Try and get this all throughout your department. And if you're an individual that you're watching this and you're a police officer, whether you get support or not, go and train. Go and train. And I guarantee you, if you go to a jiu-jitsu school and you tell them you're a police officer, they're going to give you some kind of a deal. So listen to what we're saying. Your life depends on it. Your family's life depends on it. The police in general, the reputation of the police depends on it. Go out there and make this thing happen. That's all I got. It's good to be. Thank you guys for doing this. I appreciate you guys making this video for us. And, and uh, you know, just for me, like this is hugely important. I'm trying to get this pressed out there. I know that Dr. you've used the, the term, you know, eight, eight highly trained officers are better than having 10. I know manpower is an issue, but training is so important. So it's so important to these guys that I asked them, it was no problem. They came over here, yeah, let's do it. Because this is all important because everything matters here. Lives are on the line. So please, go and train. Guys, thank you. Thank you. Go train.